Welcome to the Arkham Files, an actual play Call of Cthulhu RPG podcast. Featuring Seth Morrison as Tallahassee Turner. Say, hey, Billy, let's run out in the forest together. That worked out for me really well last time. Abel Morrison as Detective Billy McConnell. You've seen what we've seen. That dead light, the butthole monster. Donovan Bollard as Dr. Simeon Can't Stand Your Bits. What in the world? Where did you find that? Peter Morrison as Dominic Drunkard. We did establish there's no flamethrower, which is a crying shame. Sam Morrison as Major Frederick Aloysius Bakersfield. As soon as the going gets tough, the Tallahassee gets going. And I am your game master, the keeper of arcane lore, Alex Morrison. Now grab onto some dice and your sanity. Let's roll. There are others out there that would recognize things. Others that are interested in my Others that are interested in my work, Bakersfield. You're not the only one. Others? How could there be others? Isn't one Corbett enough for the world? <laughs> you think you've seen evil, Bakersfield? You have had no idea. There are other things out there, Bakersfield. God, the devil, these are older, much, much older, and so much worse. As hard as I tried, I couldn't get the things Corbett told me out of my head. That thing we found in his basement kept me up at night. To think that there are other things out there like it, other things that are worse. Now, we got lucky going down into Corbett's basement. What we saw down there was the last thing I ever expected to see. We can't afford to take that chance again. Whatever's waiting for us up in New Jerusalem, well, we've got to bring everything we've got. Some things are made to do, like you a little bit. Baker sales created to do violence. But some things are the perfect form of it. It's beautiful. All right, this should be far enough. They thought I was crazy for thinking I could take down a squad of Germans with nothing but a net. Well, look at me now. There are others out there that would recognize things. Others that are interested in my work, Bakersfield, you're not the only one. People I thought I only shared. Some of my friends. This occult fad that's going on. But no. Alright, so first things first. I gotta pour the salt out and create the circle. Okay. Now I've got to draw these weird patterns and start chanting. All right, here goes nothing. Varelis, Libarum, Aniasio, Epergus, Acreusm, Maloisha, Zecul, Zantarum, Reuim, Baleorium, Acibus, Zism, Taniacian, Caliasio, Teulium, Traiason. <laughs> I've been in here for months, Bakersfield. Months. And here you are, still running around in circles. You're asking All right, I said the words. Where is it? Where is it? That didn't do anything. Stupid salt circle. Try again. Huh? Who said that? Uh. All right, if this doesn't work this time, I'm out of here. Forget the salt circle. 
Varelis, Libarum, Aeneasio, Epergus, Acreusm, Maloisia, Zecul, Xantaran, Rewin, Baleorium, Acibus, Zizum, Taniacian, Taliasio, Teulium, Traiashon. What do you want from me, master? Okay. Ho, ho, ho. Uh, hello there. Uh, <clears throat> yes. What can you tell me about the creature in New Jerusalem? Mm, I know nothing of what you speak. It's some kind of monster, some abomination created by a madman named Mr. Corbett. Ah, yes, I know of him. Some kind of new abomination, if I had to venture a guess. That's it? Is there nothing else you can tell me? That is all I know. Be careful. Uh, okay, well, uh, be gone with you. Gladly. I didn't learn much from the creature. I did learn one thing. I can summon it anytime I want. Maybe that creature will come in handy. Gotta get it right on the first try this time. There's no room for mistakes. All right, stay calm. Remember that you've done this before. Just stay focused and you'll be fine. Just breathe. Remember what you're fighting for. You've got this. Varelis, Libarum, Aeneasio. Major Aloysius Bakersfield, you are speeding along north. You are maybe about halfway to, the, to Jameson's cabin. You're on the dirt road. You're heading north. You do remember and you spot another lane leading off to a farm, a uh, farmstead that you passed. If you remember on the way here, uh, Jameson told you that was the Layton farm. Um, that you are coming up on the lane, turning out that way in a moment on your way up to Jameson's cabin. Uh, do you do anything or do you just drive by? Uh, I feel like I need to just keep driving. Um, that we're going to have to make a stand uh, in New Salem. And that's the best way we're going to be able to protect these people is by making a stop, stopping them there. Okay. Plus, I'm a stranger. I don't think they're going <laughs> to... I drive up. There's monsters coming. Get in my car. <laughs> As you summon a monster. <laughs> <laughs> I roll up and I'm like... Gesturing wildly to get in my car. Yeah, I just drive by. All right, so Bakersfield, all these thoughts flash through your head and you grit your teeth and... Steal your resolve as you drive, drive past the lane leading off to the Leighton Farm, feeling a pang of regret that you might not be able to save these people if they are still there. As you're driving up, Major Bakersfield, you decided, as you told me, that you would like to start summoning. You told me that you would like to start casting Summon the Steed of Stars on your way up there. 
So Bakersfield, how many magic points would you like to spend on this spell? You could spend anywhere from one to all of your magic points. How many magic points do you have? They regenerate like one hour, dude. Spend them all. Yeah, like one every hour. Um, Which, uh... So, also, speaking of Tallahassee, since it's about 8 p.m., you cast your thing at... Like 8 a.m. 9... Nine? Yeah, so Tallahassee, your magic points are probably refilled completely. Noise. At this point. Yeah, you. Yeah, it's been more than 10 hours. Anyway, sorry. So Major Bakersfield, how many magic points are you going to spend on this spell? Um, I'm going to spend all 10. Okay. All right, so the way that this spell works is that for every one point of magic that you spend on this spell, you get 10% chance to successfully summon this creature so if you spend all 10 magic points you will have a 100 percent chance of summoning this creature unless you fumble your roll which is anything in 96 and above what this also does bakersfield is for every magic point you spend it costs an extra five minutes to cast the spell the idea being that the longer you spend casting this spell, the higher the likelihood you are to succeed at it. So, with those 10 magic points, that means the spell is also going to cost or take 50 minutes to completely cast. You did tell me that you were starting this just as you were heading out, so that means you should be completing this spell right about the time you get to Jameson's cabin. Also, Bakersfield, this spell costs 1d4 sanity points. Oy. All right, oh. <laughs> I'm rolling. So uh, I'm gonna need a kook. So I'm gonna need you to roll that now. Do you want me to roll uh, for succeed first before I roll that? No, I want you to roll the sanity right now. You you, you roll it when you spend it. You spend the sanity two. and the magic points. So you're okay. You lose two sanity points. Ooh, down to 33. <laughs> you are down to 33, <laughs> and you are down to zero magic points, Bakersfield. So Bakersfield, as you're driving and you are speeding along, you are doing your best to focus on your driving while also uh, giving enough attention to this spell as you begin chanting the words of the ritual in order to summon whatever this insane, monstrous creature is that you have seen once before. Bakersfield, what does that chant sound like? Oh my gosh. <laughs> 94. Oh. I rolled a 94. <laughs> How much luck you got? <laughs> Ooh, I succeed. I didn't roll a fumble. I succeeded by two oh points. My gosh. It's a good thing wow. I used that all 10 magic points. That was points. the only way he would fail? Is that was the fumbled? only way to fail that was if he rolled a 96 or above. Wow, way to come cut it as close as possible. Major Bakersfield, you became you came within two points of failing your 100% success rate spell. That is insane. <laughs> Nothing by, like by the skin of my teeth. Bakersfield, you are struggling to focus with all of this going on with the stress of getting up to Jameson in time, the stress of whatever is coming towards you right now, uh, the regret from passing the Leighton farm without being able to do anything about it. As you said, who's going to believe a random stranger that's yelling at that monsters are coming? You're focusing on your driving. You're trying to focus on your chanting. And you can feel it almost slipping away from you, but you manage to barely hang on to these words as you're chanting them on your way up, getting closer to the cabin of your friend and comrade, Grant Jameson. One thing you notice as you are getting appro as you are approaching there, Jameson's cabin is deep in the woods back up here on these roads. And as you start pulling into these woods, you realize it's a lot darker in these woods than it was outside of them, and got darker a lot sooner in here than it did across the rest of the area. All right, Dom Card, Dr. Simeon, Tallahassee Turner, you guys are in Denny's. Um, you guys have finished fortifying. You have everything boarded up. The windows are boarded on both floors. Uh, it has been dark now for 
in probably about 30 minutes. You hear a lot of chaos going on outside. Um, along with Goodman Gray, his, uh, his four men, uh, you have <clears throat> uh, Abraham Harvey, the general store owner who seems somewhat cowardly, though he's, he's tentatively holding a firearm in his hand. You have Ishmael Graves, though, while he's old, uh, he, he looks like a man who's got some guts and knows how to handle himself. Over at one of the tables, uh, while he's holding a uh, an old service revolver that appears to not have seen much use since maybe the Civil War uh, and is drinking way too much alcohol is the former cops, constable Robert Morgan. Is Dom with him? Yeah, Dom's over there talking to him, asking him if he knows how to work a flamethrower. So you just pull this trigger here, right? <laughs> <laughs> you, you also gotta, have you uh, got to prime it. You got to prime it first. You have Daniel Ames, the butcher. Uh, he's holding a rifle, and he also has a, an assortment of uh, knives around his person. Is he standing near the baker and the candlestick maker? Uh, he is standing near the baker, who is Ishmael. <laughs> I already made. I already made that joke. What? I already made that joke. You did? Yeah. When? Why are you stealing his jokes? Because they're funnier when I say them. Yeah. Oh, they, are, they are. They are funny. Uh, you have Constable Ezekiel Dawkins, who has a an old Colt single action army that he is holding, uh, much uh, very similar to Tallahassee Turner's. Tallahassee's kind of looking at his and looking back at back at his own, looking at stupid Ezekiel Dawkins' dumb hat and long coat, like he's some sort of cool <laughs> cowboy adventurer. But he looks like some kind of cheap knockoff. Def- definitely ain't <laughs> um, famous. That's for sure. <laughs> How many books does he have? Exactly. None. Probably zero. I've never heard of him at all. You've never heard of him at all, Tallahassee. Nope. He looks like some sort of dime store knockoff of a Tallahassee Turner. He just wants to be me. Uh, the mayor's there. Goodman Gray is there, though you don't see any weapons on his person. It's because he's a shapeshifter. He is the weapon. Um, he is the danger. <laughs> okay, is there anything you guys want to do? You hear there's a lot of talking. Um, I tell everybody over in the- to shut up, and I'm going to do a listen roll to see if I can hear any pitter patters of some uh, puffajai. Um, okay, uh, have you guys barricaded the door yet? Uh, Billy McConnell has not yet returned, and neither has Major Bakersfield. Are you guys closing up the door and barricading it so, for the siege? <laughs> so I w- or are you waiting? I went out and I drew a couple of X's on the map. Yeah. So the big X with a circle, that's where. Uh, can't stand your bits. Did the beefing. That's where yeah, that is well, where he, I beefed. That's where he beefed. You did a beef well didn't you do a beef trail leading you over here? Yeah, I I beefed all the way over to Denny's from the center of town. Okay, yeah, you beefed all the way from the center of town yeah. up to Denny's. <laughs> the butcher and I beefed so, all the way to yeah. Denny's. Well yeah, I'm assuming you beefed every few feet. <laughs> well, in order for you know. this to work, like I had a beef and then he had a beef. Like they're like I, I can't believe how much beefing Alter- we did. Alternating <laughs> beefs. Well, yeah, but I mean, you can't just continuously beef from one end of town You'd to the other. You'd be surprised like, what a butcher and a psychologist can do when it comes to I beefing. I assume there had to be some intermittent <laughs> beefing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got... <laughs> Let's just say that it was a thorough beefing that happened. All right. All right. We have a thorough beefing from the center of town leading off to Denny's. Yeah, 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 yeah. It looks like a grand slam in the making. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so you, the- would call it, you, you could call it a meat lover's... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Meat lover's a meat beefing. lover's skillet. A meat lover's skillet, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's what that's what Can't Stand Your Bates is calling this trap. It's the meat lover's skillet. <laughs> They'll never see it coming. It does look like a panhandle Beef on the map. <laughs> All right, so uh, what what are these booty traps you're laying out here, in Tallahassee? Booby traps. Booby traps. Uh, that's what I said. Booby traps. Yeah. So the X's are the booty traps that I was laying. The booby booby traps. Booby traps. <laughs> that's what booby I said. So the other X's are where I beefed on cars. (laughs) (laughs) 
Those are the X's where I beefed on cars and also <laughs> planted di dynamite. Wait, didn't you have a book called uh, The Beefing? Yeah. Tallahassee Turner and the Beef Traps. <laughs> 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 We're gonna have like 20 minutes of usable audio. In this <laughs> you realize the name of the episode is gonna be the beefing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want to make sure that you know there wasn't just beef in the butcher shop, okay? There was also some pork. So I'm assuming there's a fair amount of pork in there. <laughs> oh, yeah, the butcher and I pork no, just the crap beefing. out of that place. Yeah. Um, he used a sausage, there was some pork sausage. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, we, yeah, there is a variety of meats. Grabbed onto some <laughs> pork chops, ribs, yeah. shoulder, yeah. <laughs> pork shoulder. Grabbed onto that pork shoulder and... Yeah. Yep. Okay, so you parked some cars there and you dynamited them and yes. beat them? <laughs> My. Okay. Sam. So we got some, we got some beefy vehicles and some beefy booty traps. Booby traps. Booby traps. <laughs> Sick. That's what I said. <laughs> Beefy booty traps. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm just, I'm just. All right. So Tallahassee Turner is out there, kind of setting this stuff up uh, right now. Also, so we got Dom Card and Doctor Simeon. Um, let's see. Is there anything to roll here for? for beef. Setting up these traps? <laughs> roll for beef. Oh Sam. <laughs> yeah. Do I need to have you roll for beef? Um, well, I guess you're just laying down dynamite and running some fuses back from him, so that's not exactly complicated. So, I don't think there's anything. Alright, okay, so Tallahassee, you're out there doing that right now. Um, uh, Dr. Simeon and, uh, uh, Dom Drunkard, you're inside. Um, do you want to, is there anything you want to do inside there? Do you want to talk to anybody? Do you want to... Yeah, I want a crash course on how to use the flamethrower so that I can actually use the flamethrower, and I really want good stats in flamethrowing. All right, well, you don't really have enough time to get good stats in <laughs> flamethrowing at the moment. Like, sorry to break it to you, my dude. Uh, but, um, because there actually is just a straight-up flamethrower skill. Firearm flamethrower. Uh, what if you also so, set up the flamethrower out there with the beef booty traps? Booby traps. That's what I said, booby traps. Beef booby traps. So okay, so that you don't burn down the tavern. How would I set up the flamethrower to with go off by a itself? rope? That doesn't so, make any sense. Let me be a rope. So I got an idea. I can I can you know, I can uh, disguise you. So you just have to go out there yes, on the let's ground beef me. and I'll beef on you. And uh, well, you cover have... me in. Wait, that's a bad get it, idea. Get inside the baby shark, cut open its arms and legs and stuff, and wear it like a suit. We've already, <laughs> we've already, yeah. Oh, use the baby shark as a suit. You are the I shortest. Think that's a good of idea. Us all. Yeah, and uh, I will be a decoy, and then I will jump up yeah. and flamethrower yeah. all of the. So I'm fine. So uh, Pete, I'm fine with giving you like a base range of using it, because you know, like your fire, like handguns and and. And rifle and shotgun have that base range on there, um, so I'm fine with giving you a base range in your in your flamethrower, so you don't have just like a one percent or a zero. Right. I'm um, liking this. You know, so I mean, it's a flamethrower. It's a it's a similar concept. You just point and pull the trigger. I don't know. I actually had to shoot a flamethrower, so I could be way off. Um, you got to prime it. You got to pump it and prime you gotta it. You got to pump it and prime it. And then then you can uh, then you light it, and then the pressure pushes it out. When the pressure pushes it out, it goes scoop. Okay, so your regular, like, firearms rifle is 25%. Can I just have the 25? Um, sure. I will give you the 25. Yes, 25. Um, and that might be way generous, but who cares? <laughs> <laughs> but that's all right. fine. I'm fine. Um, I'm flamethrowering all the beef so it can be nice okay. and, and medium. One of the, one of, um, Oh, nice, yeah. That helps get the smell out there. Um, okay, so yeah, one of Goodman Gray's one of Goodman Gray's men is giving you kind of a rundown on how to run it. So this is how you get your 25, your base percent here is them uh, giving you the basic rundown on how to run a flamethrower. All right, so Dr. Simeon. Can I roll a listen? Uh, yeah, go for it. What are you listening for? <clears throat> uh, Pitter-patter of the, of the smoothies. Uh, okay. 
Um, so yeah, 60 out of 70 on a listen. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so you're listening. You don't hear uh, the pitter-patter of smoothie feet. Um, do I hear anything? But you do... You hear a lot... Yeah, you hear a lot of chaos outside. Um, and you hear gunshots going off. Um, screams. You know, it's all muffled. It's all outdoors. But, yeah, there's a lot of chaos going on right now. You hear some of the conversations going around. Um, people kind of talking to each other. The constable and Goodman Gray are kind of having an exchange. Uh, you hear them, you know, kind of mumbling to each other. They keep looking over towards the mayor, uh, who's looking very nervous, and he's just kind of standing over uh, in the corner near the bar. He glances over at you, kind of makes contact, eye contact with you for a second. And he makes looks over to Goodman Gray and Constable Dawkins for a second and then looks back at you and he just he looks extremely nervous. Um I guess I can't really grow a psychology, can I? Because I don't know what's actually going on. Or what they're saying. Um Uh yeah, you can't hear you you just you can kinda you can hear the, that they are talking, but you can't make out any words as to what's what they're discussing. If I can, I roll another listen, and if I get like a hard or extreme success, can I read their lips or something? Uh, you don't have the skill for reading lips. You'd have to get closer, and then yeah, um, try to overhear. Can I stealth over there? Yeah. All right. It wouldn't necessarily be like a sneak. This would more be like uh, just trying to look inconspicuous uh, as I nonchalant, you know, and yeah, inconspicuous and unsuspicious yeah. as you go. Uh, so, okay, you go I'll, I'm probably not going to get it because I never get my stealth. But all right, here we go. All right, it's worth a shot. <laughs> Fifteen, baby. Whoa, out of twenty-two. You freaking guy. You, you can check. Freaking you can guy. check. You can check. Somebody you double can check, check that e- cheating, my butt. cheating cheater. He's pretty freaking lucky. That's 15. Dude, how? How? I'll give you two how? reasons, Alex. There's one. There's two. Don't. I don't want either <laughs> of those reasons. Stop flipping me off, Donovan. Gosh. Doctor's orders. You're flipping don't me off already with your anymore. dice rolls. <laughs> Every dice roll you give me is like a bird. Okay, so I'm, I'm closer to him. Okay, to so... You very weirdly... Why weirdly? <laughs> are so... <laughs> somehow managed to inconspicuously uh, meander your way over. You kind of just like... You got like a hammer and like a board and you just like <laughs> hammering it on like a table. <laughs> like, and you move over and kind of do it like in another table closer by. Um, and they don't, for some reason, notice you freaking suspenders clad psychologist ninja <laughs> um, so as you get closer yeah you do start to pick up on some of their conversation um, uh, and you hear uh, Gray <clears throat> and and Zeke Dawkins says you know absolutely Mr. Dawkins that could be a position for you in our organization um, as you can see, the uh, good mayor has most likely outlived his usefulness, especially with the fall of this place and the culmination of our efforts here with the acquisition of the creature. Uh, we will not be needing his services any longer. Ah, uh, yeah, I can, I can understand that. Not that he was ever all that effective as it was. You know, he's, you know, he's an idiot. Gray, you know that, he's a moron. I did suspect, which though he was a useful moron. His stupidity actually made him quite handy. He didn't ask a lot of questions, which is what I like. If you understand my meaning there, Dawkins. Ah, yeah. I believe it, Dale. Well, Dawkins, if you uh, would like to solidify your place in our organization, then I would like you to see you handling this loose end before the night is over. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. 
Fancy my way to doing that there, Mr. Gray. Shouldn't be any too much trouble. Everything going on here. Don't you worry, just keep my seat warm at the table. So, um, and then they kind of glance up and they both, uh, Dawkins glances over and kind of looks over towards the mayor. And they kind of look around. He goes, uh, Gray walks off, goes over to talk to one of his men. And Dawkins kind of goes and peeks through one of the cracks in the boarded up window nearby. He checks his revolver again, checks uh, the ammo that he's got um, on his belt. What do you do, Simeon? <clears throat> so right away, I go over to the mayor and start talking to him about what I just heard. So as you walk up, he looks around, he looks at you, he's looking nervous. He looks over to the driver that's standing nearby. The, the driver uh, gets in between the two of you and he's like, oh, what do you need, Doc? What are you, what are you looking for here? Oh, I just, uh, you know. You gonna help you? No, you can't help me at all. I was just gonna go talk to the mayor real quick. I got some uh, strategies I want to go over with him with. Go over with him with? I don't think you need to do that. I think he's he's a, he's a busy man. He's uh you know he's the mayor. He's the mayor of a mayor of an important town. He doesn't need to he's, he doesn't need to be dealing with this right now. He's got a lot on his. Well, oh, matter of fact, he does have to be dealing with this because he is in fact the mayor of this town. So how about you just do me a favor and uh, get out of my way? Flash your suspenders at him. Why don't you just do me a favor and hit the brakes? Why don't you do me a favor punch him, punch and him. uh leaf get off the brakes? Why don't you do me a favor and get out of here? Why don't you do me a favor? <laughs> 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 Slap him in the face with a piece of beef. So, I'm like, oh my. Uh, hey, uh, hey, 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 doctor. How you doing, Mayor? What's, what, what do you need? Nah, Mayor, it's all right. Yeah, I, I got this. Why don't you just hang back there? You yeah, good? I don't think you need to tell him what to do. No, it's okay. I, I, I don't, I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind talking to the the good doctor here. He, he's a psychologist, right? And I know it's a soft science, but I uh, maybe could use a little bit of a soothing. You know what? Moment. I was gonna tell you it's that uh, these guys are gonna murder you, but you know, screw you, man. I'm out of here. He's a soothie. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, a soothie. I'm a he's trying to. He's, <laughs> I could use a soothie. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, yeah, well, no, I just wanted to go over with uh, some strategy, just so you're in on the loop, being the mayor of the town and all, I thought it would be prudent information for you to know right away. Uh, I think that sounds uh, that sounds like a great idea, Doctor. Doctor can't stand your bits. Uh, strategies and, and, uh, and whatnot. Uh, very necessary at the moment for the mayor to uh, know what's going on and have a battle plan ready to defend his town. Yeah, isn't that right? No, that's not right, Mayor. I think you're good. Doctor, I think you need to get out of here. Well, um, I can't go anywhere. We're barricaded in this place, so... Uh... Why don't you just walk over there to the other side? Look at that. There's lots of space over there. Mayor, take a walk with me over here, would you? No, he's not going to do that. No, he's, a free, he's a free agent. He can do what he wants. He's a busy man. You said that, but he clearly wants to talk to me, so why don't you uh, back off? Look, doctor, I'm telling you right now, you're not going to talk to him. I'm not going to let him go. You need to get out of here. We got a lot more things to worry about at the moment. We got a lot of things happening. Why don't you worry about that, and why don't you worry about your own skin right now? All right, so I'm going to go talk to Percival real quick. I'm like, all right, all right. I don't, all right, I'll go, I'll go to the other side of the room. Okay. So I go over to Percival. <clears throat> like, Doctor. Hey, you know, Perce. Yeah. Um, I just heard some very disturbing news that uh, the constable and uh, Graywood, whatever his name Goodman is, Gray. Goodman Gray, Goodman Gray is is gonna kill the mayor. Okay. Uh, tonight. Okay. Um, the mayor has some valuable. That's probably the least disturbing news I've heard tonight. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, continue. Okay, well, I have some le I have the least disturbing news to tell you tonight. Um, okay. They're gonna kill the mayor. Okay. During all the hubbub, 
Um, he has obviously has some valuable information about this organization that Gray has that he's yeah. trying to recruit the constable yes. into. So I need to tell the mayor, and we need to find a way to protect him. No, you're right, Doctor. Uh, I know of the organization. I have a few contacts, but they're very low level. And if we could get some more information about who might be in charge, somebody who's higher up on this, that we could use to exploit. Well, I know Goodman Gray is up there because he is definitely recruiting for them. He seems important, yes, but he is... That he is he is a hard customer, I can tell you that. I've seen a lot of hard cases and he's one of the hardest. Well, um, we need to figure this out before it gets too dark. Um Look, you said he had information, right? Is there any way you can make him tell you? Goodman? The mayor. No, um no, the mayor. Yeah, well I can't get to the mayor because uh they got one of their goons protecting or keeping him away from him. So that's what I came to talk to you about. I need you to create a distraction or get the goon away. Okay. Yeah, if it, yes. If if I can get you to the mayor, can you you're not going to have a lot of time and Goodman Gray's no fool. He's going to he's going he's going to have an idea of what we're trying to do. Can you work fast enough that you're only going to have one shot at this? I notice these guys talking and I come over to to chat with them. What's up? Oh, what's up, Dom? Did hey, you get the flamethrower figured out? Oh, I did. I now have 25% so I fill Dom in on, on, on what's going on and what we need to do. So maybe we uh, have some sort of distraction. Uh, you can go beef on them while I talk to the mayor. Yeah, I can beef right on his chest. The beef's all gone. It's out in the street. Don't worry about that. Uh, don't worry about that, doctor. Uh, Dom and I, can, we, we can handle the distra- distraction. You just, need to get, you just need to get to the mayor and you need to get that information as quick as possible. You need to find out who is the one calling the shots, who is, who's who been paying him all this time to keep an eye on this situation. Done. All right, we go beef all over them. <clears throat> I could use my command of the wizard. <laughs> um, you very much could use command of the wizard. You basically get one command. Uh. But that would be. But if you come, if you succeed on that, he would be forced to do what you say. Yeah. Um, but it costs one magic point and one point of sanity to cast Command of the Wizard. Okay. All right. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna com- do do the Command of the Wizard then. Okay. But you also have not cast this spell. I know. Before. So. So let's. There let's get might this be going. a little shenanigans to do this. All right. Sweet. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to find out what's going to happen when you roll some dice. Except for it's going to see if you can get like a two. <laughs> <laughs> so he needs a hard pal roll, right? Yeah, but he's going to do that once he gets up there and cast the spell. So, all right. So uh, so you guys get a plan. You guys all put your hands together in the middle. Ready? Break. Ready? Wait, hold on. Should I do it on the mayor just to get all the information that I need from him, or should I do it on the guy to get him away from the mayor? Wait, who's with the mayor? Who's so the driver's with the mayor? Yeah. He won't let me get talk to the mayor. The driver at all. is is one of the goons. You. Yeah, he's he's beef blocking me. So I gotta I either gotta use the command on him and get him away, or I can use it the command on the mayor and get all the information while you guys distract the guy. I feel like either one would... I guess it doesn't matter. All right, yeah, I'm just going to use it on the goon. You're going to use it on the goon? Yeah. So you don't want these guys to make a distraction? Yeah, we'll make the distraction. You use Commander the Wizard on the mayor, and he will tell you all that you need to know. Okay, and that is, I need to ask, I need to, you need, I need to know who's the head of the organization, and and that's what I need to know. Yeah, like any who's information been paying you him. can get out of who's giving him orders and how we can find them. And anything you can find out about the Devereaux. <laughs> <laughs> you know, scratch, yeah, let's just talk about the Devereaux. <laughs> All, right. All right, I'm just going to ask him, tell me everything you know about the organization. And the Devereaux. Um, and the Devereaux. It's got to be yeah. It's got to be more specific than that. Well, that's what I was thinking. I only got one command. Yeah, you got to... Uh, so it needs to be... Um, ask about the boss. Tell me who's paying you. Yeah. Okay, ask. yeah, that'll work. Because he might not know who the All actual right. boss is. So what's is? going yeah. to be our distraction, Percy? Um, 
Don't don't worry, drunk drunk car. Just follow my lead. Let's do All this. All right, I follow his lead. Okay, so uh, so uh, Dom and Percy, you guys walk over near the driver, and uh, you he uh positions himself on the other side of of the driver from you, and then he uh Percival kind of walks up and bumps into you and the driver. He's like, "Look out, drunk card! I am walking here." Well, maybe you need to walk on the other side of town where the smoothies are and get eaten. Maybe you should walk straightly and not drunkenly like you always do, drunk card. Well, maybe you And then he pushes you a little bit. And then I kind of shove him back, but, you know, the driver... I'm getting, you know, a good portion of the driver then pushing him. Oh, yeah? Well, maybe you need to kiss my butt. Oh, whoa. Those are fighting words, drunk card. Maybe that's the the reason that you're so obsessed with the smoothies is because you are a smoothie. You take that back. You take that back, drunk card. Those are really the last words you've ever spoken. Your mom's a smoothie. <laughs> oh, I'll take your mom back behind the woodshed. <laughs> you got too far, drunk card. Your mom's a smoothie. You were barfed out of your mom's mouth. <laughs> and then he starts he starts jumping into you. He starts jumping into you, but jumping into the driver who's in between the two of you guys. He says, Hold me back. Hold me back. And he starts shoving it. You guys are shoving into the driver in between you guys. He grabs onto your shoulders around the driver, and you and he pulls you down to the ground as you guys start wrestling. We tackle the driver together. Take that and that drunk card. I pretend like I'm punching Percy, and I punch the driver. You're a ne'er do well and a scofflaw. You're a nothing but a. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Doctor Simeon, what are you doing? I, my mind went blank. You're nothing All right, but I'm, gonna, I'm casting the command of the beast. Do I need to do a power roll now? Did you say the command yeah. of the beast? Yeah. So uh, this the guy in the middle is like, hey, "What are you guys doing? Get get out of here! What? You, get off me! Get off me!" Uh, so Doctor Simeon, once you see them kind of toppled to the ground, uh, you I run over to the mayor. Yeah, Doctor Simeon just makes a beeline straight towards the mayor, and he's looking at this commotion on the ground. He looks up at you. You guys make eye contact, and Doctor Simeon, roll your hard pal roll. I need you to spend one magic point and one point of sanity. Do it. All right. Down to 63 on sanity, 11 on magic points. Okay, your pal is 60. You need to get 30 or below. What'd you get? I got a 69, but I do have a lot of luck. So, So you have a couple options in this situation. You have to get, yeah, you can spend 39 luck. Um, I don't know if you can actually spend luck on a casting roll, but I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but can I push the roll? You can push the roll, uh, okay. Dr. Simeon. <clears throat> and um, if you push the roll, you will succeed in casting the spell. You have to pay the cost of the spell again, so that'll be another magic point and another sanity point. Another sanity. Okay. But if you fail, uh, there can be some dire consequences, including um, well, some dire consequences that you're not going to find out unless you fail casting your spell. Well, I don't think I, if I already failed, I don't want to do that. Well, I you failed. This pers- is if you push. Okay, the, the thing is, though, you push the roll and you cast the spell again, you succeed casting the spell. So no matter what, you will succeed on casting the spell. But if you fail your hard pal roll, you'll have to deal with some extra consequences. But you will succeed casting the spell. But I don't want those consequences, even if I <laughs> succeed, because I could persuade him with a good enough story to tell him to tell me what I need to know because don't be he's weak. gonna die. So, I think I'm just gonna beeline it to him while they're scuffling and just kind of tell him, like, uh, you're, you're, you're the dead at the end of the night, I need you to tell me everything you know, and we'll do our best to protect you. This is true. Or, you could do the cool dramatic thing. (laughs) 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 Oh my gosh. Fine. Remember how you fought an alien space spider? 
Yeah, it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> it was no, not Dr. Simeon, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make you do what you don't wanna do. But uh so Just it's flash your, your your beef at him and persuade him. Oh man. Alright, um, I'm going for the power roll. Uh the the alternative though too is that if you um um, if you, whenever you try to cast this spell again in the future, unless you go back and completely relearn the spell, it will be a pushed cast roll. So, hmm, that's the dire consequence then. No, um, it's just after you failed it the first time, um, unless you go back and completely relearn the spell all over again. If you try and cast the spell again, that will be considered the pushed cast roll, even if you tried it again, you know, in two weeks. It would still be that okay. same push cast roll. I just all right. So well, either you're going through this now, or the next time you try and cast a spell, which you know is fine because it might not be in as dangerous of a situation, um, or you can go back and relearn the spell all over again. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. All right, down to 62 sanity, 10 magic points. Here we go. 91. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oopsie. All right. Your head explodes. All right. Who's paying you? And then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Doctor Simi, you cast the spell a second time. So, I need you to take one more, um, magic point down and one more sanity down. I did. So now, you, okay. All right. And now I'm I need you to roll and a D sixty-two. I need you to roll a d six. Oh, jeez. Two. Two. Okay. Okay. All right. So, Dr. Simeon, you you walk up to him and you make eye contact. And, um... Oh, yeah. There's one more aspect of the spell that I forgot. But we'll do that in one second. You make eye contact with the mayor for just a second. And, um... Uh, you... You you get the the form of the spell in your head that you read from the book. And you speak, uh your command out loud towards the mayor as you release your will on the spell. At first, it feels like it hits this kind of brick wall in your mind as you're trying to force your will out in the way that it explained it in the tone that you read. And it's not working. And for a second, you feel like maybe you're just going to give up and walk away. And then you decide instead you're going to... Instead, you, you buckle down and you push through this wall in your mind and it breaks it cracks through and you feel your will propel out from your mind and go directly into the mayor who's standing in front of you there seems to be some sort of stronger solid connection that is made in your eye contact together and when this happens you say to him who is paying you the money to watch to watch Corbett and Shep okay and as you say that um Okay, so your part of the penalty is it you need you have to it's going to cost you magic points equal to uh, your magic the magic points spent times what you rolled on the d6. Two. Okay, so two more magic points and two more sanity points. Okay. So um, I'm down at and, eight and sixty. Yeah, and also you feel there's some kind of strange ripple that goes out from you and you hear in the walls uh, the squeaks of a few mice um, as this ripple goes out that's all the effect that you seem to see from it but now I need you to make an opposed roll from your pal against the mayor's pal to see if you can to see if you can successfully command him with your with your spell with your powness <laughs> oh don't fail me now eight freaking a oh ho, 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 ho. It's extreme success uh the mayor rolled a 79 Thank so heavens. there's that dr simeon rolling <laughs> back at it 
So after you push through the, the brick wall in your own mind, it comes in contact very shortly with what feels like a tissue paper willpower that is the mayor's. But uh, the force of your powerful will, Dr. Simeon, just crashes right through that of Mayor Jedediah Marsh. And your command goes directly into his mind. Um, right now, Dr. Simi can't stand your bits. I need you to roll a d10. Oh, boy. One. <laughs> one? Okay. You yep. can permanently permanently increase your pal by one point. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 61. <laughs> 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 Technically, I rolled a d10, so that would be a 10. Oh, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> no, just one. Okay. Just one. So the command pushes through into the mayor's mind, and he looks at you, and you see his eyes dilate for a second. And then, as the command enters into his mind, he looks at you, and he opens his mouth, and he says, he says, Maya Seidel of Arkham. <gasps> bum, 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 oh, no baby. wonder he was friends with Gorbit. Yeah. Info. Didn't I call that Billy at the very yells beginning? From across you the town. called it, yeah. Galahassi, <laughs> you son of a gun. Remember what I said? Okay, hold on. The okay, mayor let's was get this in crap with over Corbett. with. What are my penalties? Where are the rest of my penalties? <laughs> That's it. The mayor was in on it? Yeah. That was it? Yeah. Back in season one? Yeah, in season one. Remember when we were with the cops? But so is it a so is it a push roll every time now or do I have to relearn nope. it? You don't have to, not to Nope, you don't have to do that ever again. Now when you cast that spell, you just cast it. You'll still have to make an opposed pow roll versus somebody okay. else's pow cuz you have to push through their will in order gotcha. to to affect them with this spell. Oh man, I thought it was going to be like uh yeah, you're about a madness and you're a smoothie now. Yeah. Yeah, you suddenly become well, a smoothie. Well, you've always been a smoothie. Already. That definitely happens. That's, that's already. I'm smoother now. <laughs> <laughs> Major Aloysius Bakersfield. Uh, your headlights going along on this dirt, this narrow dirt trail is lighting up the trees. You're driving along maybe a little faster than you probably should be, and you find and you see the headlights finally light up the uh, outline of the Jameson cabin as you come skidding to a stop. Uh, as your headlights were dancing through the trees, it, it was playing tricks on you almost. It almost seemed like there were figures and movement all over the place. As you come pulling up, you park, you jump out of the car, and just as you do, you pull the whistle out of your pocket and you blow the whistle into the night air looking up at the stars that are lit overhead as it is now full dark you release the spell that you've been casting for the last 50 minutes narrowly succeeding <laughs> um, as the call goes up into the air and out into the ether and wherever it might be that this creature lives there's a part of you that knows that it hurt it and so now, all you have to do is wait until it arrives. But as you come running up, uh, you see some lights on inside the Jameson cabin. And the door is shut. But as you come running up, in the woods, just to the west, not too far away, you start to hear the sounds, the screeches and roars. <laughs> of something approaching. Billy McConnell, as you and Ezra Denny pull up outside of a darkened shack over on the eastern side of town, you climb out, you give Ezra a look as you both check your firearms one more time, bring them up into a ready position. Start heading towards this darkened shack, though it appears to have some some sort of firelight on the inside. But you also, at this same time, begin to hear screeches and roars and screams from the west side of town. <coughs> as it appears that you are running out of time.
Tallahassee Turner, uh, you are outside finishing setting up your booty traps. Booby traps. Booby traps. Booby traps. That's, that's what I said, booby traps. You finish planting the dynamite. You set up the beef traps. And you are putting the finishing touches on your final trap that you have prepared. As you also, on the west side of town, begin to hear screams of a different kind coming from lungs and and larynxes that do not sound human. Though mixed in, you do hear the screams of humans as they are approaching to the west. Though the night is obscured with smoke and fire and the sounds of chaos are everywhere, you know that the creatures have arrived and they are making their way towards you and the rest of this town. I go, I go running back into the tavern to warn the fellows. And I say, gents, get your blenders. It's time to whip some smoothies. All right, hey everyone, this is Donovan. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Arkham Files. If you like what you heard, please leave us a five-star review, share this with your buddies, and check us out at patreon.com forward slash The Arkham Files, where you can sign up to get some cool bonuses, or boni, and support your favorite freaking show. Thanks again for being an Arkham Files listener.